Hi guys, Cinch Talk Tuesdays. Uh, I'm dying today, so I kind of figured I would show you guys my process. Um, I'm doing two different dyes, or two different dye techniques, excuse me. Um, one is a steam bath kind of deal, and the other is a dip, dip dye. Um, I've also got my little cinch shop partner hanging out with me. I've got him contained right now in his high chair and goldfish. So hopefully he stays out of our way as I'm doing this because last time he tried to help and it turned out really well. So to start, I took this cord. There's two ply and eight ply sitting there. Um, I put saran wrap down on the floor. Uh, I suggest if you try this technique to do it somewhere that you don't care is going to get stained with dye. Um, I chose I chose my floor because uh, I'm getting new flooring in about two weeks, so it, I don't really care if this linoleum ends up colored. Uh, I've got my colors there. This mohair was soaking for about two hours in a water vinegar bath. Um, and then I wring it out and it's just kind of and let it hang for a little while to sort of dry It's a little damp yet um, And this is just kind of this type this technique of dyeing is just kind of fun Because it, it's always so random what comes out of The wash with it because I don't I don't have any control over how it turns out it just these colors mingle together um they create new colors. It's just, it's really a lot of fun. Um, as you can see, so this two ply, when mohair gets wet, it wants to kind of twist up, which is fine. But I've got all of these kind of tied, loosely tied together, so that when I do pull it out of the steam bath and go to wash it and everything, it, uh, it stays untangled. Because mohair is a tangly mess when it gets wet and when you dye it. So to start this, I literally just take this, whatever color I would like. I'm going to start with um, this turquoise. It doesn't look like turquoise because it's so dark. but And I just kind of start painting with it. And just kind of... And it'll be fine if it's down on the... Um, the saran wrap there um because eventually all these like end up marrying up um i kind of just go at it and it'll spread out and do crazy things but i gotta be really careful to remember not to put my colors back on the linoleum after color it. Um, I think I want this red down here more. <coughs> Mister. So I kind of line out where I would like these colors to be. Um, this color that I'm dumping on right now is called tobacco root. It's really kind of a cool color when it wants to be. Um, I'm gonna kind of put some more turquoise in here somewhere. And you guys, I literally, whoops, this is red. Just kind of put stuff wherever. So this should turn out really cool. I think that's enough of an orange. Um, so this is what it's gonna kinda look like going in. Okay. Let me get my glasses taken care of and I'll be right Okay, so now I've got my colors kinda all where I think I want them. May not be perfect or whatever, but now I'm gonna wrap this up. And I usually fold my ends. Okay. 
and then take one side, get it folded up nice. So this is kind of how all these colors marry, end up marrying together. Cause I end up, oops, sorry. Um, twisting this all over. And as you can see, like these colors are already starting to jive together and do funny things as I'm rolling it. This is why we do it on stuff that we don't care about because every once in a while these will leak. Anyways, I just twist it up real good and then make a good fold with it. Oops, and we're leaking everywhere. Make a good fold with it. And I've got this dye pot. Well, it's not a dye pot. It's just a giant chef's pot that I got for free. And I've got a little um, steam basket in the bottom of it. And I just put my roll in there and I cover it with tin foil. And we let it steam for quite a minute. Um, I think like 45 minutes is what I go for. So there's that technique. My next technique, um, we just kind of call it a dip dye. Um, this is horsehair cord that I am dyeing up, tie dyeing up. And I started out with the horsehair in the steamer bath. And I didn't get the saturation that I wanted. So I'm going back and fixing it. As you guys can see, like, there's a bunch of little white hairs. And, like, the dye didn't really take very good in the blue. Um, I've already re-dip dyed this Merlot color. And I like it quite a bit more. It's oversaturated in some spots. Um, so it's really dark. But that was from it being in the steam bath. Um, horsehair and mohair dye up a little differently. That mohair... Um, absorbs the color a little bit more and kind of uh, sends it through the cords so it kind of evenly dyes a little bit better and as you can see well not really in the video but in person like this cord really just is didn't turn out very good um, so now I'm doing a different I'm, I'm re-dyeing it so I'm doing this dip dye so what I do I get a pot of water boiling, um, and I've got this handy dandy little thermometer that's fairly awesome, and I will make sure it's getting hot enough. So it's at 170 right now. Um, I usually let it get up to 175, 180, uh, but I got this flame down a little bit just because it's a smaller pot. Um, but pretty much, I just kind of go by feel here. Blue dyes, you don't need a lot. Um, and there's already a lot of extra dye in this cord to begin with. So I'm just going to put a little bit extra in there to kind of help. That's about all the extra I'm going to put in. I may put in a little more later. Um, but I just put, put a little bit of extra in to uh, help it even up the dye give like them spots that are kind of white like that give it a little bit more dye to absorb um that's not already being taken out and then i've got this vinegar and we put vinegar in everything um the vinegar just kind of helps it absorb and set And usually, as you can see, all them little bubbles and everything's kind of rising to the top. That means it's working. So it means it, it's setting. At least that's what I think it means. It means it's starting to set into the cord a little bit more. Um, and you don't need a lot. So I'll let this sit here and simmer for about half hour. Um, and I might I might tie it up a little, a little shorter. Just because there's a lot of hair set down in dye that I don't want, so we'll just kind of raise it a little. Just a little. There we go. And then just shove it down with a little spoon. Yeah, and we'll just let this sit here and simmer in the heat for um, 
like I said, another half hour, 45 minutes. These two will probably get these two will probably get done at the same time. Um, and then I will take them off and let them cool. And uh, once they've cooled, so I'll let this hang here and cool on its own. And then I take this one, I'll take the, um, the top off and let it cool as well. And as soon as they are to, to the temperature that I can safely handle them without burning my hands, I'll take them out of here and take them to the bathtub to dry or uh, rinse and wash. Um, and then we'll hang them dry and come a couple hours from now, we'll see what colors they turned out like. So here's that dye out of the dye pot. This is the steamer bath one. Um, and I put it in a pot of warm-ish water with wool light in it. And I'll sit here and I clean it two or three times and rinse it. And then um, I will condition it with some Aussie Miracle Moist conditioner, mostly because that's what I had left over from us. And then I will throw it on our dry rack here. Um, as you can see, I already pulled my horse hair out, rinsed it off a little bit. I didn't wash this yet or put conditioner on it because I still have one more color to go. And I like to be able to wash and condition it all at once instead of doing it in sections. It's just easier that way. Um, so I'll let that sit here and kind of drip dry for a little bit until um, it's not dripping all over the place. And I'll rehang it and finish dyeing it later today. Hey guys, I just wanted to give an update or rather give you a picture of what those dyes turned out like. Um, this here was our steam dye. It turned out nothing like I thought it would. Um, if we get it over here, in kind of the more fluorescent light, there's purples and greens and some weird blues and yellows. Um, my fire engine red did not come through very well, nor did my orange. And I think a lot of that has to do with the amount of dye that I put in the jar to begin with. I didn't put very much in any of those jars. So the cinch kind of came out a little um, muted, kind of pastel -y almost. Um, as far as the dip dye, I, um, in between videos and everything, I decided to dye up those same exact colors and... Um, show you guys kind of what a dip dye cinch sometimes turns out like. Um, this one, the fluorescent orange. The fire engine red still kind of has a little bit of a pink tint to it. Um, and the tobacco root came out much darker than it usually does. Anyways, I just figured I would show you guys that. The This was the dip dye. Oh, and then the dip dye on the horse hair. I haven't got it strung up yet. But this was the finished product after I re re-dyed everything. Um, you can still see a little bit of the yellow came through, but that's okay.